Hello and welcome to this video on Sociology and Science, Interpretivism and Kuhn. In terms of the issues with studying society as a scientific subject, we have here the problem of prediction. In the natural sciences, such as physics or chemistry, lab experiments can take place to isolate causes and scientists can make accurate predictions based on the data they gather. However, human beings act differently and behaviour cannot always be predicted. So unlike working with, say, a chemical, whereby if we heat it or we water it down, we would expect the same thing to happen again and again, irrelevant of where that experiment takes place. When it comes to humans, humans are unique creatures who respond very differently in often very similar circumstances. So we can't always engage in prediction. Next, we have the issue of artificiality. Sociology wants to study society in its normal state, not in an artificial lab setting. So whereas in a lab we can control all the variables in society or in a field study, we cannot do that. And so therefore, there is always the issue that the moment you take a human into a lab, it becomes an artificial experiment and an artificial study, and your findings will be artificial too. Furthermore, there are ethical issues to consider, that is, issues of right and wrong. Human beings may object to being studied in lab conditions or treated like a scientific experiment. Human beings have thoughts and feelings, and they may not wish to be treated like some sort of chemical or some sort of animal, for that matter. Furthermore, we have to consider the Hawthorne effect. Humans often act differently when they know they are being observed, and natural objects do not do this. A rock is a rock, no matter who is looking at it, but a human may behave differently if they know they're being watched. Next, we have to consider the issue of validity, so how true to reality something is. People may not give information which gives a true reflection of the matter in hand. Scientific research is likely to be reliable over valid anyway. So the reality is someone could decide to lie or they could give you information which they believe to be true but actually isn't true. And so in that regard, we can never be absolutely sure when we study humans that our data is valid. Further criticisms of the idea that sociology can or should want to be a science is that sociology is so very different from the subject matter of the natural sciences. Unlike objects, people reflect and act on the basis of meaning. So we create our own meanings, we share meanings, we do not simply respond to stimuli. We have an interpretive phase to pull upon some social action theory. Sociologists are also part of the social world. They are studying and analysing, so in that sense they will have their own values and they cannot simply leave these at the door when they're doing their research and it may colour their findings. Not all sociologists believe that humans are passive subjects of external forces, which positivists tend to assume. Interpretivists take a very different view to human action than positivists. They tend to say that we are, again, interpreting the world around us and we are labelling things and responding to the labels we create. Next, some sociologists argue that the role of sociology is to explore the meanings that people construct rather than look for an external set of explanations. So that is taking a micro approach, zooming in, finding out what does something mean for an individual, how do they label things or what meanings do they attach to their behaviours, rather than saying, well, let's try and come up with a single set of explanations for all humans everywhere. Some sociologists argue that by attempting to study society in a scientific way, it limits sociologists' ability to study their chosen topic, because it could well be that they only can receive funding for certain types of study, and that means they're not actually following their personal interests and desires. It may well be they're just doing what they can afford to do or what they can get funding for, and so therefore there may be whole realms of society that are not being studied because people will be limited in this way. So what we're seeing here is essentially the beginning of an opposing argument to the view of positivists. They are contesting uh, the view that sociology should be a science, and this is going to be the basis of the interpretivist perspective. So many sociologists argue that the subject matter of sociology is fundamentally different from the natural sciences and propose that we may have an idealised view of science, in fact, that actually science isn't special or perfect or particularly useful in certain regards. In fact, we should approach our sociology in a very different way. So interpretivists would argue that people engage in meaningful interactions, that all society is, is the sum of all actions and interactions, and we should be seeking to find out what the meanings are that people attach to their actions and interactions. Here, interpretivists would argue that we should seek to try and gain what is known as Verstehen. This is a German word, so Max Weber used it. It was a term which he coined to suggest that the role of sociology is to understand partly by seeing through the eyes of those who are being studied. So really what we're talking about here is empathy. So not sympathy, not feeling sorry for someone, but empathy, trying to understand what it feels like to be someone. There's a very famous 
Native American saying, which is you should not judge a person until you've walked a couple of miles or two moons in their moccasins, that is walk in their shoes, that you can only really understand what it means to be someone when you've lived their life. And that's essentially what the staying is and what Weber is getting at here. It's open to subjective explanations of behaviour. Different researchers may interpret the same event in different ways. That's why sociology is not like a like natural science. There is no one way. There could be multiple views on things. So the purpose of sociology would therefore be to uncover meanings. Postmodernists come at this from a different angle. So we've had our positivist perspective, we've had our interpretivist perspective, and then postmodernists decide to chime in. They reject natural science in its entirety, saying it's just somebody's big story or meta-narrative, that it's just one person's view of the truth. There is no absolute version of the truth, that it's just a person who has perhaps power and therefore is saying this is true, but it does not necessarily mean we have to adhere to it. Science's explanations are no more valid, therefore, than any other explanation, be it religious, political or otherwise, then therefore there'd be no need for sociology to emulate it. Science often claims the monopoly of truth, that is, that it has the complete understanding of what truth is, that it knows what absolute truth is, or only it can discover it. And actually, we could argue this is a form of domination. This is a form of those in power, those scientists who have been given authority, deciding what is true and what is not. And so actually, we have people who are marginalised, those who don't have a voice, and their truth is not being heard. This then brings us on to the work of Thomas Kuhn. He rejected the view of science as a continuous process of hypothesis testing and theory forming in the way that perhaps Karl Popper had posited. Most scientific inquiry, he claimed, takes place within the confines of a paradigm, and this is a body of knowledge, methods and theories which scientists hold to be true. So all scientists today are working within the same paradigm. It's like an umbrella under which there's all these ways of acting and behaving and seeing the world and all scientists buy into it. Inquiry does not step outside the boundaries set down by the paradigm, so fundamental theory does not change, it is not challenged. Instead, in many ways, what people are doing is that they're engaging in puzzle solving. So science consists of puzzle solving with the puzzles and the ways of solving them being limited to that which is within the boundaries of the paradigm. So you only ask questions that the paradigm can answer, you only use methods that the paradigm considers legitimate, and you only come to conclusions which the paradigm will prop up. You don't think outside the paradigm or think outside the box. This would potentially be considered dangerous and may lead you to being ousted from the paradigm, being perhaps exiled from the scientific community, struggling to find a job, laughed at, ridiculed, and so on. Kuhn calls this normal science. It is different to Popper's view in that the work of scientists is not wholly objective because existing theories are not constantly open to challenge. Instead, scientists are simply seeking to prop up the paradigm, to maintain it, to keep the status quo. From time to time, however, something occurs within normal science that the paradigm cannot explain. It may be the case that this anomaly, so this unexpected finding, challenges the whole paradigm. So an individual hasn't done it themselves purposefully, or even a group of individuals may not have purposely done this, but some data starts to come up and the paradigm doesn't have the answer. And so this could lead to what is known as a scientific revolution. And what comes about as a result is the destruction of the old paradigm and the creation and establishment of a new paradigm. The scientific community, however, is likely to resist any change that challenges their authority. So generally, scientists are quite small-c conservative. They want to maintain the status quo, maintain the paradigm as it is, because it's good for them. It keeps them in a job, and they know where they fit, they know where their place is in society, and generally they have quite a lot of power. If Kuhn's account of these large-scale paradigmatic shifts are accurate, then the objectivity claimed of scientific inquiry is completely undermined. For what is objectively true in today's paradigm may become objectively untrue in tomorrow's. So actually, truth can never be truly absolute or be truly objective. It's just true for now in the current paradigm. And if we have a paradigm shift, well, all the stuff that we believed in yesterday may now no longer be true, which is very problematic and completely undermines science entirely. If we were to seek to apply these ideas to sociology, the existence of different perspectives, so whether we're talking functionalism, Marxism, feminism, and so on, as well as intra-perspective debate, so even within feminism, we have 
uh, contemporary feminism, such as third wave feminism, black feminism, postmodern feminism. And then we have kind of more traditional forms of feminism, whether that be liberal reformist or radical feminism and methodological differences. So thinking about here, positivists and interpretivists indicate that sociology does not operate within a paradigm. There is no single paradigm under which all sociologists operate because we're all so different. Therefore, there is no such thing as normal science for the sociologists. Some discussion has taken place as to whether sociology is post-paradigmatic, having moved out of the paradigm established by functionalism before the 1960s, or whether it is stuck in a state of being pre-paradigmatic. So is it the case that there was a paradigm, functionalism, and now we've left it, or is it the case that we've never had a paradigm and one day we'll move into it? Moreover, should we strive to achieve paradigmatic status? Is that desirable? Or is there more value in retaining a variety of perspectives and methods? This is a debate for which there is no clear-cut answer. That's it. Thank you very much.